All right, guys, so today it's phrasing and articulation. So these are ways to shape your parts, like any part, like a lead, your bass lines, whatever it is, um, but you, and your entire song, really. But you want to think about these two distinctions. And what phrasing is, is it's where are you going over the course of the phrase, right? So are you, like, getting brighter and more aggressive? Are you, like, dipping down into, like, deepness and coming back out? Right? And this can be for an individual instrument or your whole song. Right, but where are you going over the course of the phrase? Like, are you swelling in volume, etc.? And then articulation is how are you shaping each individual note? Right. So, is this one going to have a little bit more bite? Is it going to be a little bit um, longer, or is it going to be like this little like point, like this little like staccato kind of uh, jab? Right. And sort of thinking about how to shape each note. So, um, I'm going to use an example. Um, so we start without any real automation or anything, and it's just you know, you'll notice that it gets boring pretty quickly, and we're just going to make something that's a little bit more interesting, a little bit more well articulated. Now, I've already made one, and I think I'm just going to make a new one with you, but I'm going to show you the one I made after I show you the kind of flat, boring one. So, this is what it'd be with, without any embellishment. Right, it quickly gets boring, right? So um, using the tools I showed in the previous video, um, I'll, I'll have a card pop up or look in the description for it. Um, but we're going to use uh, basically shape the MIDI to you know, be interesting and also shape the timbre. So what I want you to look at in this next example is how all these knobs in the lower left-hand corner are moving, right? The phrasing and the note length, and those sorts of things, but also the knobs on the FM synthesizer. And for you who don't know FM synthesis, you can basically think of as each of these three knobs above the bottom one turn up, it gets a brighter, sharper, more biting sound. Um, but basically that would sound like this. So, you know, it's moving and it's evolving. It's, uh, it's way cooler. Uh, you know, I could have done this in a million different ways. This is the way that I did this one. Um, we'll make a new one in just a second out of this original boring one. Um, but you, you get a sense for what I'm talking about. So you have phrasing, you have articulation. So there's this kind of movement over time, like this, this phrasing, this directionality, but then each of the individual notes are kind of articulated, right? And there's a lot of different ways that that's happening. Um, just to show you some, like this one, you can see the notes. Right, this is the FM knob, so this is cranking this up and down. Right, this this FM knob uh, from oscillator B. But this, you can also see it's got this upward slope to it, right? And that's part of the phrasing. So this has elements of phrasing and articulation in it. Um, right. Right, and so some of them have this very sharp envelope. Right, and some of them have a fatter envelope. And if you actually look, um, we're kind of repeating this chunk of four over and over again. And then I'm kind of making different versions of it a little bit. Um, or sorry, this chunk of four. All right, so let's let's dive in and let's take this boring thing. So this is where we're starting, and um, we're just going to automate a few of these. So if, if all you're in here is for like the core theoretical distinctions and you think you can execute this on your own, you're welcome to drop out. But this, uh, from here on out, we're going to be building something from scratch. Uh, might take a minute or two, so um, hope you enjoy. So the first thing, uh, I kind of renamed these since the last video, but phrasing. Um, I, right. So if you take this, you can unlink your envelopes, and this is a really important technique. So you could make this envelope eight bars or four bars long. Let's just stick to four. It'll be a little easier. But say I want the phrasing, I want this to swell in volume right up to here. And then I want it to dip down to like almost nothing at the very end, right? but not all the way to nothing. And let's kind of maybe have it fall like that. So it's kind of like this arc. That could be a little bit fun. Maybe we'll pull this down a little bit. So. Right now, you can already start hearing a difference. Right, 
Another thing that will help is if we make this oscillator velocity sensitive so it gets more bite as it gets louder. Right, here, right you can hear it getting darker. Right, um, so accents, we can do this in different ways. So this kind of has like a one, two, three, four, right, like kind of the way it goes in pitch. So we might think to accent it this way, right? Um, but it might be fun to unlink this, right? Make this a little bit longer. And we can start duplicating this and we can do it in different ways. So maybe like we can do it kind of the way we expect three times. But on the fourth one, maybe we do like something a little bit more unexpected where we do it like this, right? Uh, so we kind of like build up and then we hit this last one and so then we could duplicate that and do this last one um, Where we maybe do them like really loud but going downwards Or something like this All Right, so then we're, we're doing a little bit of different articulation here, All right? So this uh, this is again. This is the velocity that I'm modifying, All right? So these are the drive knobs on these these velocity racks we're just shaping volume right now for this articulation. Free. Um, and let's bring this one up a little bit. So it's really good to not just think about volume, but also think about this timbre. So um, that's when you would sort of play with this kind of thing. You could also do it with like the drive on a saturator or a million different ways or like, um, you know, any way to... Uh, shape the timbre over time, like over short amounts of time specifically. FM is a great way to do that though. So um, again, we can unlink this, right, and make this like four bars long. But FM is nice because you don't have to make it steps. You can make it these little guys and you can sort of growl into a note, right? Depending on how you do it, right? So we could. Right, like that could be one kind of thing. We could maybe have every other one be articulated most of the time, but sometimes we could articulate it like different rhythms. Right, so right now it's like right, we could double this, right? Oops. Right, and maybe we want this to like get a little bit less intense over the course. So we're adding a little bit of phrasing in here to these articulations. Maybe this one could be fatter, right? Maybe we'll switch up the rhythm once here. We'll do this like a 3-3-2 three, three, kind of rhythm or something. So this is like, we could take this and put this like here. And then maybe we could make this like sharp just for the sake of it and then you know we, we I'm not gonna spend too much time sculpting this and making it sound amazing but it's gonna sound considerably more interesting and it's gonna sound pretty good right so then we've got that weird like kind of um, syncopation thing going on in this timbre compared to the actual velocity accents and then we could actually have this build back up a little bit Right. So the next thing is note length. Note length actually makes kind of the biggest difference of all um, in a lot of ways. So if we just took one of these, kind of the way I like to do it is, um, you know, so we're shaping the note length for each one, right? We could have like a long, short, long-ish, super short, right? Well, what I like to do is grab this, you know, duplicate this, um, and then maybe a couple times so that we've got like four different versions. And so then this one could be like long, short, short, short. This one could be like three longs, a super short, and like a me or two longs, super short. Now the reason um, I do it this way is I usually will keep one for a little bit and then I might move to a different one. Right, so to have a listen here. Right, versus that's gonna sound very different than this. Oh, hold on, we gotta unlink this envelope. 
right? So if we unlink this envelope, then it's the notes will keep going. Right, and we can even like play in between. Like if we started here, we'd have three shorts and a long. Maybe these could be even shorter. Right, so um, you know, then you can also have this whole thing, and then you have this kind of longer evolution. Now remember we started with this. Right, it's fine, but it doesn't go anywhere, it doesn't do anything. Now you might do very, very different things than I did with this, but um, what I really want you to get out of this is, you know, this distinction of phrasing art and articulation, thinking about it not just in terms of volume, right? You don't want to just think about the pitches of the notes or the rhythms of the notes. Like, you know, whether they're short or long, loud or soft, if they're bright, like whether they're like reverberant, like just in this one hit, right? Or like there's like this little pitch wobble, though that's part of the articulation, right? So there's a million things you can do to spice up your, your um, different parts. And you can think about this not just for an individual part like this, but the whole song. Like what's the phrasing of your song? Like do you want to do any master effects? Should you articulate the downbeat of the drop in some way? Right, so you can think about articulating the, you know, at the group level, articulating at the master level, as well as phrasing at the group and master level, and at the instrument level. Okay, so I hope this was informative. Um, sorry I've been on break for so long. I've been traveling all over the place, going on adventures, helping people move, um, going to Burns, um, training at the producer dojo. Um, but I'm back, and I'll be at this for the next couple months till Burning Man. Um, so I should be pretty regular on these videos. Uh, next time we're going to get into harmonic theory and like how to choose better chord progressions. Um, so that should be fun. All right. Take care, kids. Bye.